Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And what I wanna do in, today is talk about how to make your own Markdown blog in 2022. So what I did is I created a new Markdown template. So again, what happens is that libraries change. So, um, so you always wanna kind of make new templates every once in a while, so that way you capture any sort of legacy issues. Like a lot of the old Gatsby Markdown blog templates, they use older versions of Gatsby and then it's not really easy to move into sort of like from Gatsby like three to four and all that stuff. Although this one I made in Next.js. Okay, so if you do want to use any of my older templates, they're still available and they still work and they still do a fine job. Okay, you would head over to npmjs.com and then there's a tool called Create Markdown Blog. Okay, and with this, you can just essentially just generate a markdown blog uh, whenever you like. Okay, you just run the command, say, hey, do I want a Gatsby blog, a Next, Markdown blog, Gridsome, Nux, Sapper, Scully, or this Gatsby portfolio template, and it'll spin you up one of that template. Um, I'll probably add this template to that soon, so keep an eye on this being updated and adding this new template to that roster of templates you can generate. Um, so I'll probably actually make that update right after this video. But Essentially, what you can do is you can click this little use this template and the link to this uh, will be in the video description. You can click use this template and make a new repo. So you can simply click use this template and say, hey, you know, uh, sample, blog, whatever you want to call it. And what this does, it creates a new repo. So any repo on, on GitHub, you can actually make a template, which is really useful because oftentimes what I'll do is I'll create like a basic template of like my starting point, like all this, do all the stuff that I would do at the beginning of any project, um, then save that as one repo. And then I head over the settings and you can make that a template repository. And in the future, I can go make a new project starting from there, which is really nice. Okay, so you have this project. Cool. So then what I would do is I would go clone it. So I'd go boop, copy it, head over to here, open up my terminal, clone this new project, git clone, paste the URL for the project. Let me just get this out of the way. And there we go. So then I will cd into the folder, sample blog. So now see I'm in the sample blog folder. And then I'll do an npm install to up to install all the dependencies. So that's gonna take a second to install all the Next.js dependencies. Okay, but in the meantime, let's take a look at what you have here. And essentially this is kind of all set up, just so you can see kind of like what the setup is, because oftentimes you're gonna probably wanna tweak this and kind of customize it to your end. So if you go here in the components, there's like the footer, header, and layout. So if you want to change like the general layout or physical, you know, uh, visual of the page, here's where you're going to do it. Like this will be sort of like the header above the blog post, the footer below the blog post. And then this is just the general layout. So in case you want to say like, like, so that's where the header would show up. That's where the footer would show up. And then this children's where like that particular page of the website will show up. Okay. And so you can customize this to your heart's content. Um, cool. Okay. And then if we go to the pages, Okay, and it's just gonna it's gonna complain until it's done installing all the libraries. Um, we go to pages. Essentially, there's the index page, which is just a general page. Okay. Okay, and you can just kind of customize that to your heart's content. Um, but then there's the blog page. Now the blog page is a page that actually lists all the different blog posts. So like this is the JSX that essentially takes all the posts, comes in as props and then it just loops through them. So you really don't need to touch this unless you really want to kind of customize the way that the, the posts display it, you know, but you can kind of read through this and see how that works. And now essentially the way this works is that um, here in this get static props, so if you're not familiar with Next.js, what you do is that you're generating static pages. And this is the reason why like these markdown static uh, generator blogs are so cool because um, everything is since it's statically generated, your pages are going to be faster, they're going to load faster, they're going to be more secure. Um, there's going to be a lot of benefits out of that. So the idea is that if I need to go get information that I need to do like server side, I want to do that before I build out the HTML pages. So that's what this get static props function does. Basically what it's doing, it's going to read the folder. So it's right here, it's reading the folder called posts and getting a list of all the files in that folder. Okay. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm mapping, uh, making going over the list of files and then creating a URL for each one saying, okay, hey, take the file name, remove the, the .md at the end of the file name and saying that's the URL for this particular, um, that's gonna be like the, the URL for this blog post, that's the slug. 
Okay, and then the way the posts are written in Markdown, okay, so if you haven't done a Markdown blog before, generally you write Markdown, which looks like this. But generally above there, you put what's called front matter. So it's always like fenced in by these like three dashes. And technically this is what's called YAML. Okay, YAML is a syntax, which stands for yet another markup language. So you could technically put whatever you want here. Okay, so essentially it's just like title, property, property value, prop, key value, key value, key value. Okay. Um, so you can put whatever data you want to be here. And this data is referred to as the front matter. And you can essentially export this data like a JavaScript object. So essentially that's what I'm doing. If you go back to the blog page, that's what we're doing here. We're pulling in the slug so that we have the URL of the page and then you have the front matter. So for, for each post, you're going to have a slug, the URL and the front matter, which is all that data that's inside the blog post. So then we create the array of posts because each post is really just this object. So you have the slugs, so you have the URL and then the front matter. So you have the data, like the author and anything you put in the blog post. Um, and then that's what that does. So that we send that array over, so that becomes part of the props of the blog post. And then I'm literally just looping over that array and making each post show up in the page. Again, you could leave it as is and just style it. You don't have to like edit this, but just so you can understand like how it's working, because you may want to customize it because right now the way it works, you have to put the posts directly in the post folder. Like you can't make subfolders of posts um, without editing the code and making it a little bit more complicated. Okay um cool then there's the post page so this is the page that actually shows you like the individual posts okay and essentially this is going to be like the same same pattern okay so what i'm doing through going through here is i'm going to loop through all the files and here you're going to see two functions get static paths because when you have like a dynamic page like this because see this is like post slash whatever the, the url for that post is so what i have to do is i have to come up with the list of possible posts ahead of time because again this is statically generated so this get static pass function is like looping through all the files and generating the url for each file and then what happens here is i go and then where's it's going to take each of these urls and then go through this get static props and say okay for that url this would be the props and then generate that page so technically the way like next would do this in build time it would first run this function get static paths to figure out what are all the different possible URLs for this page. And then for each URL, it'll run get static props to see sort of like what are the props for each possible page. And then it'll then render the component and render each actual page. Okay, and essentially this is just saying, you know, there's the main, and then it's just gonna take the image of the post, put the title, author, date, tags, and then this is the part where you actually set the content of the post. Okay, all of this can, you know, be customized further. Um, really the only thing you need to do, the only thing you have to do is kind of style it. Cause you'll see like, let me just run this NPM run dev. Okay. Out of the box, it's going to look like this. Cause again, I'm going to leave the designing to you. Okay. So you have the front page. I didn't touch the front page from the default, but if you go to like slash blog, see that's like the blog. And then like, this is a, this is a one blog post. So if there was multiple blog posts. You'd see multiple of these. And then if I click on this, it'll take me to an individual blog post and see like there's like one individual blog post. Okay, right now it's nothing to really, you have to actually add content and add styling, but you don't have to worry about the actual building out of all the markdown functionality. But since you watched this video and watched me walk through it, you now kind of see like, okay, what is this doing under the hood in case you wanted to customize it and make it more robust? Um, like I've used this template I actually used for a couple of websites I, I'm building rockoverflow.com. Essentially I'm moving all my blog posts to here. Okay. Rockoverflow.com. Okay. So this actually uses this template, but I've made, I've added a bunch of features. So like if I go to the blog page, okay, you can see all the blog posts. Nice. You can actually search for blog posts. That's not built into the template. I added that afterwards, but you can always look up my repo for rock overflow to see how I, in I implemented that. Okay. Also you can, you know, I set up category pages. So if I only want to look up like this category, I also set up like author pages. So if I click on an author, it'll show me all the posts by that author right now. They're just, I'm the only author, but I added those features. So that way it's a little bit more robust. And I added pagination. So you can like flip through the multiple pages instead of one big giant list of black posts. Those were all things I implemented after the fact as I was building this page. Um, but you can see like the, the starting point was that template. Okay, so as you can see what you can do. Okay, 
So that's rockoverflow.com. The other page that I did using this template was injustice.com, which I do like the way I did the blog page a little bit better on this one. Okay, so you see here I used square blog images, which I think look a little bit better than the Grok Overflow one. The problem is I'm not going to go redo 100, over 100 images uh, right now for Grok Overflow. But, you know, that's how this works. And again, you have a search. But this one I built off Grok Overflow. So basically, I use the template, I build another project, and then I use that as a template for the next project. Okay, again, these are just patterns for help to help you increase your productivity so that way you're not reinventing the wheels much. Like, I like to reinvent the wheel because one, I like to sharpen my skills, and two, I like to make tools for you guys. But um, hopefully, uh, that clears things up. So again, I will I will put a link to this template in the video description. Okay, and um, yeah, so that way you can make use of this. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Again, just to recap, once you get this all set up, so you would clone it, do the npm install to install the dependencies, and then it's just a matter of you know customizing your header and footer, so that way you have your nice header and footer. You know, basically setting up the layout of your website and then just adding markdown posts. And then here's an example post. So you can literally just copy this example post, give the file a different name, write your blog post using markdown, and then you're off to the races. You don't have to overly overly engineer this right away. You can start off with a simple blog. Um, and again, it's gonna be great for SEO because it's static, so it's gonna be really easy for the website to crawl. One thing you may want to do um, is basically use the head component to add like meta tags and stuff like that. Um, you can see an example of that in the index page. So you'd be doing something like this. Okay, and add that to like your blog post page and dynamically set it up so that way it uses like your front matter to generate like a dynamic description and dynamic title depending on the blog post page. There's also cool stuff you can do. Um, but yeah, and then again, these are, I am using CSS modules because that's Next has that out of the box. So I was using that. Um, but yeah, that's how that works. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com do make sure you head over to devnursery.com. Okay, and sign up for the Slack and Discord community so that way you can stay in touch. You should be able to find and message me on both if you have any ideas or requests. And make sure to follow me on Twitter at Alex Merced Coder and follow me on LinkedIn, Alex Merced, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit like on the video. See y'all later.